So I wanted to take a few minutes with this video to go over two very interesting topics, one revolving around how many Xbox Series X exclusive games revealed last week at the Xbox Games Showcase are going to come to PS5 as well. Beyond that, I also want to look into a developer praising the PlayStation 5 for its ray tracing capabilities. First, let me know if exclusive games are a big reason, big reason, when you decide which console to get. I know that sounds obvious to some people, but there are people out there who get consoles for other reasons like price, power, where their friends are playing, etc. Exclusive games for me are the main reason why I'd get one console over the other and <laughs> then I'll convince my friends to get it as well. But what about you guys? So comment below if exclusive games are a big reason why you choose one console over the other. Let me know down in the comments below. Now diving into the first story of the video, PS5 ray tracing capabilities praised by Project Athia developers. So ray tracing has been this next gen feature that makes the biggest difference according to some people, especially those on the Xbox side of things. Obviously, when we saw that Minecraft Ray Tracing Edition, to me, that looked really beautiful. But in terms of ray tracing capabilities, PlayStation 5 has been put down as a console that might not offer it or be able to offer it at some point, even though Sony has been marketing ray tracing as one of the pillars of the PlayStation 5. The PS5 does have less graphical capabilities than the Series X on paper, but in reality, we have yet to see by how much in real world performance. And at this point, developers are clearly the key to finessing the console to produce quality graphically amazing games with a quote-unquote weaker console again the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are not far apart in terms of graphics capabilities and I feel for third-party games they're going to be similar in terms of the outcome and we'll find that out later this year and beyond obviously but to continue Project Athia a open world game designed exclusively for the PlayStation 5 and was revealed at the June event last month the developer behind this game Square Enix had their president and representative director and I'm gonna destroy his name. I always try not to, but his name is Yos Yosuke Matasuda praise the PS5's ray tracing capabilities. So let's look at his quote and then discuss reading from Gematsu. The game Project Athia, which will release for PlayStation 5, is an open world style game in which users can freely move around the game world. PS5 dramatically improves video technology, such as with the implementation of light reflecting ray tracing technology. Compared to what you see on PC, it's nearly identical. By utilizing these special traits were able to create incredibly precise imagery. We still plan on developing well-balanced games tailored to a platform's traits, including smartphones and cloud-based games, but we will never stop developing for high-end platforms such as the PlayStation 5 because these are things that are packed with the best technology. So the part where he states that the ray tracing capabilities of the PlayStation 5 is nearly identical to what's possible on PC is a big thing. At the moment, my understanding, my personal understanding, is only some of the highest NVIDIA graphics cards are capable to pull off ray tracing. So it's clear from this developer's point of view that PS5 is capable enough to pull off ray tracing, especially in an open world game such as Project Athia, which... I hope does come out at some point. The naming has me a bit worried if it'll ever come out, but regardless, that's good to hear. And of course, Sony first party games are also implementing ray tracing capabilities on games like Ratchet and Clank and Spider-Man Miles Morales. But you guys let me know how important something like ray tracing is to you. Let me know down in the comments below. Now diving into the second story of the video, Xbox games revealed at the Xbox Games Showcase last week that will be coming to the PlayStation 5 at some point. So if people missed it, there was a good chunk of console launch exclusive games showcase at the Xbox event last week, meaning these games will eventually make their way to PlayStation and at this point, probably the PlayStation 5. From past examples, a year is usually how long a game will take before moving to another other platform if it's a console launch exclusive doesn't mean that all of these games will necessarily take a year they could take longer or take less probably will take longer or a year if, at the minimum so some people are trying to twist this meaning into a console launch window xbox console launch window exclusive but 
that's not really the case and i'll let phil spencer himself define it for you these are his words by the way console launch exclusive means the first console the game will launch on will be xbox one i don't know honestly about anything when those games are going to launch on another platform it's really up to the developer to do the work to make that happen these are games that will launch first on xbox some of these are already out on pc so that's why we chose the term that we did so Again, basically, it's timed exclusives, but they chose console launch exclusive because some might already be on PC. And beyond that, of course, it is up to the developer to make it happen on the other console. Who else is really going to do that? But now that we have that basis established, what Xbox games that were showcased at the Xbox Game Showcase last week are eventually going to make their way to the PlayStation 5. And I'm going off the ones listed by Microsoft themselves as console launch exclusives. And this list includes Stalker 2, Warhammer 40,000 Darktide, The Medium, Tetris Effect Connected, I think Tetris Effect already exists on PSVR, The Gunk, New Genesis Fantasy Star Online 2, and Crossfire. But in terms of how long these games will take to come to PlayStation depends completely on the different deals arranged and this isn't something new on the PlayStation side either. Games like Godfall will probably make their way to the Xbox Series X sometime after its PlayStation release as well. It's just interesting with this on the Xbox side of things because Phil Spencer, and you guys know this, Phil Spencer has made it seem like he doesn't want to exclude any gamer, any gamer, from playing any game, but he's blocking off an entire console base from playing these games for some time. Either way, this is positive news for PlayStation fans who do not intend on getting a Series X at some point. You'll probably see these games land on PlayStation. Until then, you'll most likely have a lot of first party games to go through in the meantime anyways. But do you guys think Phil Spencer went against his word here with acquiring console launch exclusive games since he basically is forcing people to get a specific console to play a specific game? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you guys did enjoy this video, please hit that like button as it always helps. And subscribe if you're new. I got new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And now I'll check you guys out on the next one. And welcome back to the after show. This is the part of the video where we have a little fun down in the comments below. If you're old, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. For today's thing, what I want you guys to do is to body, obliterate, destroy, and overall harass the comment section with bring on the games. Because if these games are going to land on PlayStation at some time since they're console launch exclusives, that's more games for more people to play. So it's positive news all around. And if you guys agree with that, destroy the comment section with bring on the games. And I'll definitely heart those comments like I always do because I appreciate everybody who stays to the end of my videos. And now I'll check you guys out on the next one.